I was suffering for, for those few years, not being able to make music or to perform as DJ, but it definitely paid back. Playing as a DJ, performing as a DJ, and working with clubs, with bars that are businesses, it is a business. And you want to establish yourself as a business partner to those entities, because at the end of the day, you're going to make them money. Using e-commerce to fuel a passion for music, that's right. Everybody, welcome to Honest Careers. And today I'm very excited to have Davide Nicolucci. He is a self-made entrepreneur and agency owner. And today we're gonna to be chatting about how he leverages his business knowledge and background in marketing to actually fuel his long-term passion as a career as a performing DJ. Now, today's episode is super unique with themes on music and business. And you're gonna to wanna to stick around until the end because Davide is gonna be sharing his top tips for other artists out there about how they can lock down their financial stability first. And then these tips are gonna allow them to really outperform most of the competition Davide, thanks so much for joining us. How are you doing? Hi, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's an honor. Yeah, well, I'm really excited to be talking about this. I think there's going to be a lot of applications for the people out there that have that creative or that artistic side. So the first thing that I want to jump into is, from how I understand it, you've always had this passion for music. Why did you wait on pursuing that until now? Yeah, so I actually started my first music production when I was just 16 years old. Uh, I just started as a hobby. And I so I realized that I had some talent. My friends enjoyed my, my productions. They were actually raving together with me. And I had my first DJ show at the age of 18. And by that time, I was still figuring out what kind of professional career I wanted to, I wanted to make. Uh, you know, you have your parents telling you, hey, you shouldn't, you know, go for DJ, go for an artist because you're not going to be able to maintain yourself. You know, you're not going to be financially independent. It's going to be super hard. And um, so I, I started uh, communication and uh, economy and business marketing at my university. I started doing my courses and my first internships, and I actually realized that my parents were right. I was not going to make a lot of money because I was still a, being a DJ and a music producer on the side. So I wasn't getting any money from music production, not at all. I mean, the production were, were a fair number, but the commission that I was getting with my music label was not enough, of course. When you don't have a big name, you don't get a lot of money. And I couldn't live only being a DJ. Uh, I had, I would say my ambition of being financially independent and being able to travel the world and you know have a company at one point in my life told me to stop pursuing music and focus 100% on marketing and to develop my career on an international level. Okay, so what was it about marketing, right? You were just looking, hey, I need something to pay the bills, something that's going to allow me to get through and survive in the world. What was it about marketing that kind of drew you into that career field? Yeah, so... Um, I would say that marketing has always been my passion since uh, by the time that I realized what I wanted to study, where I wanted to, you know, focus my career, how I wanted to shape my career, my professional career. Having studied communication and business, it was just natural for me to start to to, to start working with marketing, and um, I always love to be creative. And you know, actually, the first time I even thought about being a marketer was after I watched that movie, What Women Want. It really gave me an inspiration of working into advertising. I loved, you know, selling stuff to people, working with psychology, selling yourself, because at the end of the day, being a marketer, being an agency owner, a service provider, a consultant that I, that I am, a coach, a business coach, is about selling yourself. And this is the same as selling your music, uh, giving, entertaining people, giving them something that they want in that moment. So I realized that marketing was my thing and yeah as I said before I arrived at that point at one point in my life when I was 24 I was doing both things but I realized that marketing was going to pay me in the long term in the mid long term much more than just making music and uh, working as a DJ so I decided okay I'm going to focus 100% on marketing I'm going to put music on the side for the time being I actually to be honest with you I also by that time I knew some stories of people who would 
uh, either jump into the music production and DJ later on when they were already financially stable. So for example, when they were over 30 or over 40 or putting music on the side, you know, trying to get some money first and then jump right back into that. So I thought, okay, that could be my case. You know, I was suffering for, for those few years, not being able to make music or to perform as DJ, but it definitely paid back uh, until now. When you're talking about, okay, you made the realization for taking the break off music, about how long of a time frame was that? How much time did you take off? Yeah, that was roughly six years. Okay, so really not an eternity at the end of the day. How old are you right now, Davida? I am 34. Okay, so still super young. You, you waited six years. You focused on the business. You focused on learning the marketing side of things. What was your career pathway progression? Like, what did you do first? Was it like an internship? Did you study it? I know you said you studied communications in university. What was your career pathway from communications to where you are now? Yeah, as a student at my, at my university, I was still working as a DJ, you know, a couple of days a week. Uh, I was still keeping both of them. I started my internship in Germany uh, and then I moved in, uh, before I was in Sweden, I was able to get some gigs in Sweden as DJ. Then I moved back in Milano in Italy, I was still doing music production. And when I moved in Barcelona, I was, I was actively a DJ more than twice a week. I was working with Fashion TV, Hotel W, was having you know nice shows. And I was working in the morning as a marketing manager. The, the turning point was when I moved in China. I realized I couldn't keep them both because in China, you have to be all in. You, you have to really work your ass off. And that's what I did. Wait, so, so um, hold I just, on. I'm, I'm going I'm to stop you there real quick because so we're talking about you were in Germany, you go to Spain, you're like all over the place. From what I understand, yeah. you, you grew up in, in Italy, right? Yeah. So you're in all of these countries. You're working in, in the EU. How the heck does China get thrown into the mix here? Yeah, so when I was in Barcelona, I was working for this e-commerce company. And um, at one point, after three years working for them, they asked me to move back to Italy. And I say, no way that I'm going back to Italy. I, I want to pursue an international career because that's going to open a lot, a lot more doors. So I refused. And they told me, if, you're gonna, if you refuse, you lose your job. I said, that's completely fine. So I started traveling around the world with all the savings that I had. At that time, it was something around $6,000. US And I literally rounded the world from Barcelona, coming back to Barcelona in three months. And I fell in love with Asia. And I also recognized that in some countries of Asia, such as Thailand or China, there was a huge opportunities for professionals in marketing like me. And at that time, I could speak five languages already. So I applied for some job and I ended up in Shenzhen working for one of the main Amazon sellers at that time. And that really opened up a new world for me. Okay, so you go into Shenzhen, which for those of you who don't know, is kind of the Silicon Valley of China. It's where pretty much everything for e-commerce happens. It's, it's a, just a crazy, crazy city. So you go to Shenzhen, you end up working for a big Amazon seller. Where do you go from there? So from there, I actually, I work, uh, this, this is very interesting. In three months, I scaled from assistant to the manager of the Italian market to team leader on a global level to the whole marketing side. And I realized that the China speed is actually a thing. Uh, the next year, I was a marketing director and I was managing five teams for a total of 35 people. And I thought, wow, I can, I can open my own agency. And that's what I did the following year. In 2017, I moved to Hong Kong with a very small capital. I think at that time, I had 3,000 US dollars in my bank account. I opened my company. I already had a few paying clients. And that was what actually allowed me to sustain and to scale my business and to really be financially independent because those clients were paying really well. And I have to say, I, I, have, I, I had this opportunity because of the networking, even more than the uh, knowledge that I gained in Shenzhen, China. Gotcha. So in a pretty short amount of time, you're able to go from entering at a company in Germany, you move around a few times, and then there's an opportunity you move to China, which is obviously a little, you know, a pretty big jump. You start working there and then you, you end up moving up very, very quickly. I'm sure it had a lot to do with your background. Uh, you have your international experience as well. So you move up and then after getting to a certain point in the company, you say, hey, I could go do this myself. And then you decide to launch and start an agency. Now, real quick, before jumping into the points here, you've got a pretty big agency that's well known in the Amazon community. 
Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Maybe throw out some numbers in terms of, you know, either clients or people you've helped or, you know, how does this allow you to kind of, at this point, take a little bit of a deep breath and focus more on music now? Yeah, so the, the key point here is the networking. I realized that I wouldn't be where I am right now without connecting with the right people. Uh, because whatever you want to say, your network is your network, uh, your net worth, right? So we would all agree on that. And also the mindset that I learned, in, that I they're really absorbed in China together with their culture, it really le leveled up my game. So in terms of number, my agency is definitely the first to be launched in Hong Kong as agency exclusively for Amazon sellers. Um, in terms of achievement, we are official partner of Amazon advertising team. I don't have a huge uh, team with me. We are roughly 15 to 20 people. It depends on how many projects and we are fully remote. All of my guys are working from wherever. We have some in China, in Hong Kong, in the US, in Europe, anywhere. Um, if, you want, if we want to talk about revenues of my clients, we some of our clients, they generate more than two or three millions of US dollar in revenue per month. Some others, we are helping them scale their business or even launch their product or even start off on Amazon from zero. And we, we double, we triple their sales. So this is the kind of numbers that, that, that we have right now. And um, yeah, so we, we have a, a known name. We are definitely not the biggest one. Um, I wouldn't consider myself the best one, but we, we do our job. We specialize in a few things such as influencers marketing. Uh, now we're launching services for Amazon Live or TikTok. Uh, we did a lot of PPC as well and ranking services. So we are definitely known for a lot of things. And I, I have personally been featured on BuzzFeed News, uh, Fortune, Yahoo News, uh, some of the main podcasts out there for Amazon sellers. And I had some cooperation with the Wall Street Journal as well. Wow. That's huge. Okay. Yeah. And you gloss over like 15, 20 employees. Like, you know, that's, that's obviously massive and, and some big clients as well. So let's jump into it now for those people that are sitting out there and they're saying, Hey, I am a creative. I want to do music. I want to do art, whatever their passion might be. What would be, what would be your tip to them? Cause it seems like, you know, based on, I'm not really an artist, right. But based on like what I hear is like, okay, if you're an artist, you're, you're going to want to focus on that, you know, and that's going to be your big passion, but you did something differently. You waited about six years to get into that. And now you've got this business, which allows you to really focus. What do you think the advantages are of going that route versus just muscling it through, just focusing just on the craft? Yeah, I would say not only the financial aspect, because of course, when you're starting off as a DJ, the most basic problem is you have to buy your equipment, you have to buy your music. And if you don't have, you know, the backup of your parents, you can't do that because DJ equipment is still quite expensive. You know, a single DJ controller costs around 2000 US dollar and you need two controllers and one mixer. So you're going to spend five to 6,000 if you want to have the proper, you know, set. Otherwise you can have, you know, a controller that you connect with your, with your MacBook, but you're going to spend in total with the MacBook again, 4,000 US dollars. So if you don't have this financial stability, it's going to be hard for you because you're going to borrow some of the equipment. So definitely, you know, financial, financially, it helps being stable before. And also right now where we do a lot of things with social media and with marketing, you need to promote yourself. You need to do some Facebook advertising. You need to be featured in some podcasts or YouTube channels or SoundCloud. Even SoundCloud, there is a platform for artists. If you want to have the full features, you need to pay for that. You would need to pay for a cloud system to store your uh, your recordings, your your podcast, your your DJ mix, etc. But the most important thing that you can really take advantage of as an entrepreneur is your mindset. What I see here in Phuket, and this is really what you know gives me a competitive advantage, is that most of the DJs, just because they start as artists, they have no idea of how to make business. And this is, this is right when you were saying that you can really outperform your, your, your competition because playing as a DJ, performing as a DJ and working with clubs, with bars that are businesses, it is a business. And you want to establish yourself as a business partner to those entities because at the end of the day, you're going to make them money. So you have to understand this. And it goes from the simple 
playing the music that their customers might like if you're not famous enough that actually a club would call you for your own music you have to play the music that the customers like and managing your skills managing your communication with the club uh, being able to negotiate or being able to present a format that actually would be recognized as your brand or as your party and this is really important to get paid on a higher level because on that on that kind of business you would get paid on a commission basis um you wouldn't just get paid as a dj right so what and that makes sense to me right like even if you were supported by your parents and you had the money to go after the go after the the art or the craft it doesn't really change the fact that there's going to be a big gap in terms of okay there's a skill set but that skill set ultimately needs to be monetizable especially in the area of being a performing dj right you're not just playing music so that people enjoy it there's some back end result whether that's selling tickets whether that's selling more drinks uh yeah. getting a you know whatever it might be what's the fastest yeah. way that they can learn those skills that's going to help them advance their career Definitely. So I would say that artists, uh, DJs, artists in general who are starting right now are at a much easier point than people who started when I was starting when I was 18 because we didn't have that big presence of social media. Right now, social media can help you a lot. Your Instagram profile as a DJ can definitely make the difference. A club is going to book a DJ who's got 10,000 followers much better, much, very much more likely than a DJ who's got 300 followers. So work on your social media presence, definitely. That's number one priority. Number two, I would say work on doing your own press release. And that might sound complicated, but it's, it's a piece of cake. So a press release is a simple PDF file that any DJ can even create by themselves. On the highest level is created by your agency, by your manager or by your music label. It pretty much explains who you are, what you're doing, what is your bio, who are your supports, what are your releases, how many streams you have. It might sound complicated, but this is super easy to do. There are some YouTube videos that I actually use myself, you know, to get information where they explain the exact format you should follow. And it takes you just 10 minutes. And so who are you sending the press release out to? You're sending to any club owner that you want to connect with. You want to show your, your party or your idea, or you want to sell yourself as a DJ. You would just send your, your press release, your, your, your kit, your artist kit. And in this kit, you would just put your numbers, who you are, your pictures, your biography, and your sponsors or your, or your supports. Gotcha. So instead of just going in saying, hey, I'm going to go and try to talk to the club owner, yeah. you're actually presenting yourself, even if you don't have a manager or an agency, you're presenting yourself as you want to look legit. Exactly. That would give you much more authority and legitimate. Uh, it would make you much more legitimate in the eye of any club owner or of any other party group or event group who's looking to hire more DJs. Gotcha. Well, what other things can artists be doing to promote themselves? Like I've seen your social, of course, and it's, it's quite good. Is there something that's a secret sauce or that you're picking down to a specific niche? I know that you're in Thailand right now. So like, you know, what's that like? What, what are the best tactics that someone can employ to start promoting themselves easily? Yeah. So let me, let me tell you this little ane anecdote. How do you how do you spell that? How do you pronounce that? Anecdote? anecdote yeah, anecdote. it's perfect. Anecdote. Let, let me tell you this anecdote. So, um, you know, here in Phuket, there is this uh, very famous techno club. It's an underground club, but it's a part of the main group here in Phuket. It's part of the Illusion Group. The Illusion Group uh, this year was listed number 21 on the top 100 clubs on DJ Mag. So this is something big. If you're working with this group, you're working with the number 21 in the world, in the global, in global chart. So if you're able to work with this group, you're, you're the top. What happens, I, every, every techno DJ, I, I do techno tech house music. So every techno DJ wanted to play there. Of course, there is like 100 groups here in Phuket trying to get a date, trying to get a gig in that club. So unless you've been there already for a couple of years already and people do know you, it's pretty much impossible to get there because the owners and the managers are quite strict with who they let in. So my ultimate goal was, for example, to get to, to, get to play with, with my name invited by someone else or to have my own party there. But 
it, it wasn't possible. We had a huge wall to the entry for this club. So what happened, I knew that they had another club, a beach club, where not many groups wanted to enter. And it's part of the same group. So what I did is I literally invested my money and my time throwing three parties at that beach club that was actually struggling to get customers. And I didn't get paid anything because they only pay you when you reach a certain uh, threshold of income for that night. I remember, let's say you have to do uh, 10K. We did 5K the first time, 6K and then 8K. I get nothing. And I have invested in total something like, I'm not kidding, uh, 3,000 US dollar for the three parties between paying the other DJs and doing promotion media production because I did even a video. I hired a videographer. I hired models. I invited them with drinks and food at that club. We shared a nice video. It, it looked perfect. Unfortunately, we didn't do so much because of COVID and because of the rainy season. But with this strategy, giving them you know, this, this trust that they could see that actually my group worked and that we were able to make good music and that the few people who came actually, they had a good time. Then they gave me a date at the other club. And let me tell you one thing. I had three dates with my new concept at the other club. I got back much more than what I have invested for, for the first three parties that I made there. Now, I'm telling you, it's impossible to find DJs who start as DJ only with this mindset and to approach this kind of business in this way here in Phuket and I would say anywhere else in the world because they would never get it. They wouldn't do the extra leap of faith of spending this money, investing this money and throwing this money just to have, you know, a long-term satisfaction down. Right. And it's kind of, it's kind of reminiscent to an agency owner side anyway. It's like you have your client acquisition costs and sometimes, you know, you you have to invest a little bit or potentially even take a loss to bring in those bigger clients sometimes and get your name out there. And so I, it seems very simple when you say it, oh, of course, maybe you would invest some of your own money, but then in practice, uh, actually getting an artist to say that I think is, is probably uh, a little bit unique. So that's definitely a great tip there. Uh, Davide, that's where we're going to wrap it today. I think you've got a ton of valuable information and insight to share, both on the music side of things and then also on the business side of things. So maybe we'll have to have you back for a longer form uh, interview. But until then, what's the best way if people want to get in touch in contact with you? What's what's the best way to do that? If you're more interested in my artist life, DJ, music production, you can definitely find me and my events on Instagram. It's Davide Nicolucci. And on the, under the same name, you can find me on Facebook, Davide Nicolucci, LinkedIn. And I would say, take a look at our website. It's wearegrowthhack.com, where we also share a lot of tips about e-commerce and Amazon in general on our blog. And we also have a YouTube channel. So definitely check it out. And the, the best way for the DJ side, Instagram, Davide Nicolucci. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Davide. This has been unique. This has been fun. And uh, we'll see you next time.